Hello to the class of 2020. I want to congratulate you on your well-deserved success. Your hard work and perseverance over these last four years has truly paid off. On behalf of the DSBN, we wish you all the best as you embark on your next adventure. Caps off to all of you and well done. Good evening, hello and welcome. Coming to you live-ish from room 230. Uh, great to have you here this evening joining us. I'm Mr. Thorpe and welcome to you, the grads at Eden High School, to your parents, to your grandparents, to your siblings, your pets, and the millions watching around the globe. We're here to celebrate this year. We're here to celebrate you leaving high school and moving on to the next stage in your life. And we're really excited to do that. We want to tell some stories and we want to have some fun with that. But we want to be sure that you understand this is not your graduation. That's still to come. So here's what we've got for tonight's name. The grade 12 Eden High School end of school year. Then in brackets, not your graduation. That'll happen still. Online celebration extravaganza. Are you ready? So the idea for tonight kind of came from Mr. Thompson, Mr. Macchio. They put their heads together and they thought, how can we celebrate the grads and also put some good stories out there about what Eden has meant to so many people. And they loosely base the idea on John Kaczynski's SGN, some good news. Basically, tell some good news. And they thought to themselves, who are we going to get to play that role? John Kaczynski of Jim Helper from The Office, Jack Ryan from... Jack Ryan, who's going to be good looking, charming, humorous, how are they going to get somebody on staff to do that? And they came up empty in the end. But plan B worked. They said, hey, let's just ask Thorpe. I'm sure he'll say yes. So here I am. But there is one thing that John and I do have in common. Meet me over at camera too, John. Basketball shorts. That's what you and me have in common, John. Basketball shorts. Then it got me thinking, one-on-one. -on -one. Hmm, pick a charity of your choice. Me too, raise some money, 60-40 split. What do you think about that? Are you nervous? You should be. I've seen the Office episode. I know your moves. I know what you got. You got no idea what I got. Boom, boom. Oh, and then I'm pulling an MJ. All right, have your people call my peep. Call me, and we'll do it. You might be wondering, why do I have a pair of boxing gloves here? Well, I'm about to introduce our first celebrity guest. That's right, we have a celebrity guest. Are you thinking former world champion George Foreman and current reverend? Well, if you are, you're wrong. That would have been really cool, but we didn't get George Foreman. Are you thinking Mrs. Burns? She fought in that uh, charity event. No, you'd also be wrong. I'm speaking of none other than Aaron Mr. President Friesen. Hey grads, I uh, hope you guys are doing well. Looking forward to having a real ceremony all together in the fall, but just wanted to leave you guys with some encouragement before the summer. Uh, so back in grade nine on Grade Wars Day, one of the activities we had was this inflatable boxing ring. Uh, so I remember heading over there with some of my friends and there were these grade 12s standing outside of it who saw us and said they wanted to fight us. So I end up going to the ring against this guy who's like probably twice my size and when the match started he like just put his gloves together charged at me and knocked me right over and then that happened two more times and then my nose started to bleed so not only had the entire cafeteria just watched as I got flattened by this guy they all saw me like run to the nearest bathroom trying to hold the blood back from dripping down my face and I remember thinking right then, like, this is it. I'm going to be the nosebleed kid for the rest of high school. Uh, now, luckily, that's not what happened. Uh, the guy was really nice about it. He felt really bad, and everyone seemed to forget about it after a few days. But uh, the point of the story being that, you know, as we move into this next chapter of our lives, uh, it's important to have the courage to uh, step into the ring, whether that's a new school or a new job or wherever you're headed. Uh, and when we put ourselves out there like that, uh, embarrassing things can happen, but it's important to just move on because usually everyone else will too. Well, thanks, Aaron, for turning a story about being beaten up in grade 9 by a grade 12 into an inspirational story for all of us. 
that is certainly a gift. Our next guest, celebrity as well, has a beautiful mind, and I know a he will keep you entertained. Hello, graduates. Well, here we are again, having to virtually adapt, but hey, we're getting pretty good at it. Like the fashion of masks. There's so many masks around us these days, but there's one that's become pretty iconic. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm around a group of people wearing this thing, I feel like all the dental hygienists in my life are coming back to get me. That's not the only iconic mask. There's the homemade mask, like the one my wife has made. There's the N95, which sounds like a really cool Nintendo accessory. There's the Darth Vader mask, which basically says, don't mess with me. And there's the white goalie mask, which surprisingly enough, if you wear this out in public, you're not gonna have any problems with physical distancing. And if you throw on the blue coveralls to complete the look, you're golden. No doubt, these are really unique times. We haven't met together physically in a long time. I'm gonna need glasses after staring at the screen so much. I've been wearing athletic shorts to work pretty much every day, and I'm starting to look like Russell Crowe. <laughs> Strange times indeed. But as I think back over these last number of weeks and the connections I've had with students, I've learned so much about who you are. Now, for the most part, you've been a face in a box on a screen, but that's not who you are. And as I think about Eden, as we sit here in a somewhat empty building, Eden is not a building, it's not bricks and mortar, it's not an institution, it's a community, a community of people. And for you graduates, I love who you are. And as part of a community that's entering a new phase of life, live out loud who you are with no desire to wear masks. Live with integrity, with adventure, with compassion, with kindness, with faith, hope, and love. When you live out these qualities, you empower and invite others to take off their masks. The mask of fear, the mask of isolation, the mask of self-hate, the mask of discrimination you will help disarm all the things that keep us from seeing ourselves and others for who we really are, a beautiful community. You are beautiful, so go be beautiful because that's who you've been created to be. From the SLC, congratulations to the graduates of 2020. We can't wait to see you again, and we hope it's soon, and we hope it's in person. God bless. Did you catch that? That was so exciting. That wasn't John Bryan pretending to be Russell Crowe. That was actually Russell Crowe, pretending to be John Bryan. Isn't that amazing? Russell Crowe. Okay, right. Okay, I'm being told by our uh, legal team that I do, in fact, have to say that no, that, that it was just John Bryan. Thanks, John. But John did bring up some interesting things about masks. Yeah, different masks you can wear. What's the biggest problem with masks? Yeah, exactly. You don't know what the person looks like. You want to see what the person looks like. Well, I'm involved with the process, still in the R&D phase, but we're trying to deal with that issue. Allow me to explain. Let's say you hop into your car and you're going somewhere. You put on this rather comfortable piece of equipment. Just on your head like that. Then you get out of the car and somebody is coming up to you and you need to put your mask on. You just turn the apparatus this way. Now look at that, you're saying to yourself, Mr. Thorpe, I didn't know you had a twin. Exactly, I do. No, it's made out of Lego. You put it like that. Now, let's just say they say something shocking. You don't want to stand there with a smile on your face. What do you do then? You simply turn it one more time to the side. Raised eyebrows, big drop jaw, beautiful. But it's kind of rude to stand there like that. So you want to touch them on an emotional level. Know that you're connecting with them. You just turn them one more time. A tear. So, still in the R&D phases, but I think when this becomes available, you're going to be excited. We're going to do a big media blitz. Everything on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, MySpace. We're going to be everywhere. Our next celebrity guest needs absolutely no introduction. Okay, nicely done everybody. Good job. Let's get ready for that next sit. What's that? H, H, O, H, R said that I have, oh, that I need, okay, yes. Uh, so our next celebrity guest is Mrs. Burns, our pr uh, principal. In all my years of education, I have never seen a graduating class face the challenging experiences you have this year. Let's be honest, no one ever has. Learning from home, 
isolated from friends, no prom, delayed graduation, and an uncertain start to your post-secondary careers, all due to COVID-19. It's discouraging, it's unfair, and it sucks. I'm wearing these earrings and necklace today because it reminds me of the story of the oyster, a story I sometimes go to when I'm facing a challenging time. For an oyster to make a pearl, first it has to suffer. Oysters create pearls from grit that gets inside them, irritating them so that they have to produce a layer of shiny coating to go over the grit. Many layers of shiny coating, finally producing a pearl. Only stressed, irritated oysters can create a pearl. No grit, no pearl. If there is a piece of grit in your life and you can't eject it, what then? You can and you have been acknowledging the pain and discomfort of the grit right now. You are persevering, often with dignity, often with integrity, but not always, and that's okay too. You're turning that piece of grit into something new, something different, and you're even turning that piece of grit into something better. I believe in you. I have known you for these past three years, and I believe in each and every one of you. You have the resilience, the determination, yes, you even have the grit needed to overcome these unprecedented challenges and not only to survive, but to thrive. Of all the oysters in the ocean, it will be the class of 2020 that produces the most beautiful pearls. Just you wait and see. Well, thanks for that, Mrs. Burns. Interesting. So what you're telling us is, as long as we put pressure on anything, something beautiful is going to come out of it. Interesting. Let's try that theory with this egg, for example. I can't crack it. Oh! I cracked it. Oh! oh. She's so wise! The sunny side is up, everybody. All right, let's send it over to our field reporter, Mr. Thorpe, as he has an exclusive interview with your valedictorian. All right, so we are here on location with the 2020 valedictorian at Eden High School, Paige. Paige, how are you today? I'm fantastic, Mr. Thorpe, I'm doing great. <laughs> That is great news. Uh, just wondering, I uh, had some questions for you. The first one was, how did you get the news that you were valedictorian and what was the reaction that you had? So I was actually at work and the principal just DM me and it, she just said, call me. And that was it. And then sent her number. And I was freaking out. I was like, what did I do? I thought I was in trouble. And then, because it was like a week after the voting closed. So it kind of was like not even on my radar. And then, so I called her and she told me and I was really excited and super happy. Um, and then a customer walked in. So I was like super frazzled. I'm like, I have to go, Miss Burns. And then I hung up on her really quick. And then I served my customer and I was like, really like shaky. I was just really happy that it happened. So. That's uh, how that went. That's a great story, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you have a story you'd uh, like to pass on about this year, or maybe even so at some point in your high school career, um, about something that happened at school that's going to stick with you for a while? I think something that I want to mention that's just like, kind of encompasses like our whole class is just being able to be a part of student council for all four years. It was really nice to see our class always come together um, for like dances and for buyouts and for under the lights games. Like they were always there. They were always cheering the loudest and we won grade wars that one time. I think it just shows that our class <laughs> is really good, was really good at coming together and um, always going all out for those kind of events. And it always made me super happy because I know student council puts a lot of hard work into them and they really appreciated them. So. That's just something I'll always remember. Was it just that one time? What grade was it that you won I grade war? Think, I think it was last year, but like if we had it this year, we would have won it too. Like of I know. Course. <laughs> of course. No questions yeah. asked. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Last question for you. 
I don't want to steal anything from a valedictorian address that you will be giving to your fellow graduates at some point, uh, okay. but maybe some parting words that you can uh, pass on to them as sort of inspiration for the next step in the, in their lives. Okay, um, I think that something that we can learn from this whole entire situation that's happened to us in our grade 12 year is to not take anything for granted. I know it's so cheesy, but um, it's just like this year, we it was just taken away and we didn't even know. And I heard from a lot of people it was really upsetting because like they spent their final weeks of high school being stressed about it. The, um, stressed out about these assignments that weren't really even a thing anymore. So I'm saying like whether or not like you're taking a gap year or whether you're going to university or whether you're going into a trade, just like enjoy it for what it is and don't write it off and be like, oh, after university, my life actually starts. Um, start like enjoying every single day and doing the best in everything that you can do. And um, even if your first year of university or college or whatever you're doing isn't going to look quite how you imagined it um, your whole life, still make the best out of it and just live every day to the fullest. <laughs> All right. Well, that is fantastic. Yes, well done. Great. Uh, and I think that's it. So thanks for joining us and uh, we'll send it back to the desk now. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Thorpe. See you guys later. <laughs> now that you've heard stories from your valedictorian, your president, your principal, maybe it's time that we open it up and have some other people tell some stories too. So some of your fellow students, some of your teachers would like to just pass on their stories and their inspiration for you as you move on in the next chapter of your life. Hey guys. Good evening everyone. Hey Flyers. Hello fellow grads. Hi guys. Hey Eden. Hi, my name is Allison Bradley and I just wanted to congratulate all the other 2020 grads. Hey Eden 2020 grads, we did it! We're graduating! I just want to thank everyone who made my high school experience one to remember. Thanks for all the memories. And I'm so grateful for everyone in our class, especially the teachers and leaders in their school. Thank you to student council and to the athletic department, especially volleyball. Thank you for making high school what it was for me. I'm so grateful for that. I wanted to say a big thank you to all my friends, family, and teachers for helping me learn and grow into the person that I am today. I just want to take a moment to thank all of the teachers, classmates, and friends who have made my high school experience so memorable. I want to thank everyone who has taught me, helped me along the way. You have helped me more than you know. And I just want to say thank you, Eden, for the most memorable four years of my life. Those befriended accepted and welcomed thank you thank you to all the teachers and coaches for your commitment in our education and activities and also a special thank you to the slc for investing in us spiritually so what were your favorite memories of high school all those last three months were pretty fun right so many awesome memories like the grade retreats and for me student council basketball and all the teachers are just awesome my favorite memory at Eden is by far Crack of Doom and the entire rehearsal and performance process that surrounded that. I'd also like to say that when we go our separate ways, uh, to remember that you shouldn't be afraid of making mistakes because it's truly the mistakes we make that help us learn and become better people. So take risks and don't be afraid of messing up because no feeling is final and no task is too impossible. For my grad quote, I put Jeremiah 29 11 and it says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, to give you a future and a hope. I think many of us can resonate with this verse, especially with so much uncertainty and chaos happening around the world right now. Never forget that he is always watching over you and he will always guide your steps. Today, I close the door to the past, open the door to the future, take a deep breath, step on through and start a new chapter in my life. See you on the flip side. Happy grad. Thank you, Eden, for a great four years. We'll always remember them. So congratulations and see you all in October. Bye, 2020 grads. Wish you all the best, success. Thank you and I hope you all are staying healthy and safe. Miss you all. I wish you guys all the best as you continue with your education and your career goals. And I hope to see you all soon, bye. 
In the words of J.R.R. Tolkien, may the wind under your wings bear you where the sun sails and where the moon walks. You've learned a lot about yourself and about some subjects too. You've faced a mighty challenge and come out a better you. You've had the chance to read great books, explore your passions deep, work with new technology, though the learning curve was steep. Now as you move into the world, new obstacles will come, but you've learned you can face them. You don't have to hide or run. Be sure to ask your questions. Be strong and take a stand. See the needs around you and lend a helping hand. You have faith in friends and family, a community who cares. Don't let your fears define you. Be the one who dares. Yes, you can face your future. You have got this. It is true. Thanks for all you've taught us. May God's blessings go with you. Hey, Eden graduates of 2020, congratulations. You have worked really hard over the last four years and should be so proud of your accomplishments. This story is a story you're gonna be able to tell for the rest of your life, graduating during a pandemic. I wish you all the best on your next adventures. Hi grads. My message to you today is actually a quote by Glennon Doyle, and it is very simple. You can do hard things. So whenever you find yourself dealing with a challenge or you're finding life overwhelming, I want you to remember that you can do hard things. Congratulations, graduating class of 2020. In your youth, uh, things change like day by day and you continue to grow at an exponential pace. So slow things down, take it in and breathe in each milestone that you achieve. The future will come fast enough. Congratulations. Bonjour tout le monde, ici c'est Madame Gerbis. Je voudrais dire félicitations à tous les diplômés de 2020 du lycée Eden. J'espère qu'on peut bientôt se réunir en personne, mais pour le moment, je dirais bon courage à tout le monde. Congratulations everyone. I hope that you continue to build the strength of character that I've seen many of you developing, especially over the past few months. Good luck in your future. Make sure you try to do one thing every day that makes you smile. Hey grads of 2020, wishing you all the best in the years ahead. And as you move forward and choose your path in life, always remember, life isn't supposed to be easy. The problem is we think it should be and then wonder why it's so hard. So now that you know this, embrace the ups and downs, learn from them, move forward and carry on. If there's one thing I've learned in life is we get to choose our hard. And the other thing, you always have a choice. You've got this. Hi Eden grads, congratulations. You graduated from Eden High School. Good luck in all that you do in the future and we're gonna miss you, bye. I just wanted to say what a great job the host for this evening is doing, fantastic. Oh yeah, 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 uh, grade 12s, good luck. Uh, we're gonna miss you. All the best, bye. Hi graduates, I just wanted to offer my congratulations. I'm so proud of you. And in your future, I pray that you will do your best, be courageous, be successful, and especially follow your heart. Hello Eden graduates. Congratulations on reaching this important and exciting milestone. You must have lots of happy memories of the last four years, but also lots of big dreams for the future. So I'm wishing you all the best as you head off on your next big adventure. And good luck. Oh, hey graduates, how's it going? Uh, congratulations, first of all, and I just wanna say how proud I am of all of you uh, for four years of high school, now you're graduating, and especially the way that you've ended the last few months. There's not gonna be any class in history that's more prepared for the way you have to learn independently in university than you guys, all right? So congratulations and all the best. Good luck. Hello, class of 2020. They say that you don't inherit the earth from your ancestors, but instead you borrow it from your children. Be a generation that leaves this planet a better place for your children. 
All the best in your future plans, class of 2020. Hey grads, Mr. Caruso here. If you've taken my class before, you've heard me say, clean up your room. Why do I say that? If you learn to clean up your room, you'll learn what it takes to set your own space in order. Do that enough times and you may just learn what it takes to set the world in order. So congratulations, I hope you accomplish all you set out to do, but don't forget, it starts by cleaning your room. Well, that just about wraps it up for me, but there is one other story I want to tell. See, when the current grade 12s were in grade 9, that was the last time I taught a grade 9 class, grade 9 English. In fact. Period 1, semester 1, those students had to have me as their first experience in high school. I apologize. But what I was able to do was then see those kids like I'd never seen a group before go all the way through their high school years. Grade 9, grade 10 history, grade 11 law, and I still had two of them in my grade 12 history class this year. And what a great opportunity to see the growth and maturity of students as they go through high school. And so I want to leave you with this idea that you are in control of your own story. It's limitless. Wherever you want to take it, you can go. And until we meet again, we are going to, as Eden staff, leave you with that idea as the Eden staff reads to you a story. Oh, The Places You'll Go by Dr. Seuss. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head and you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know and you are the one who will decide where you'll go. You'll look up and down streets. Look them over with care. About some you will say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down any not so good street. You may not find any you'll want to go down, in which case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's opener there in the wide open air. Out there, Things can happen, and frequently do, to people as brainy and footsy as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stew. Just go right along, you'll start happening too. Oh, 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 the places you will go. 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 Oh, oh the places, places you'll go. go. Oh, the places you'll go. You'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers who soar to high heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed. You'll pass a whole gang and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it's true that bang ups and hang ups can happen to you. Can happen to you. You can get all hung up in a prickly perch, and your gang will fly on. You'll be left in a lurch. You'll come down from the lurch with an unpleasant bump, and the chances are then that you'll be in a slump. And when you're in, and a, when slump, you're in a slump, you're, you're not, not in, in for much, much fun. fun. Unslumping, Unslumping yourself, yourself is, not easily done. is not easily done. You'll come to a place where the streets are not marked, some windows are lighted, but mostly they're darked. A place you could sprain both your elbow and chin. Do you dare to stay out? Do you dare to go in? How much can you lose? How much can you win? And if you go in, should you go left or right? 
or right and three quarters, or maybe not quite. Or go around back and sneak in from behind. Simple it's not, I'm afraid you will find, for a mind maker upper to make up his mind. You can get so confused that you'll start into race down long wiggled roads at a break necking pace. Grind on for miles across weirdish wild space, headed, I fear, toward a most useless space. The waiting places. For people just waiting. Waiting for a train to go. Or a bus to come. Or a plane to go. Or the mail to come or the rain to go. Or the phone to ring. Or the snow to snow. And the waiting around for a yes or no. Or waiting for their hair to grow. Everyone is just waiting. Waiting, waiting for, for the, the fish, fish to bite. bite. Or waiting, waiting for the wind to fly a kite. Or waiting around for Friday night. Or waiting perhaps for Uncle Jake. Or a pot to boil. Or a better break. A string of pearls. Or a pair of pants. Or a wig with pearls. Or another chance. Or another chance. Everyone is just waiting. Nah, that's not for you. But somehow you'll escape all the waiting and staying. You'll find the bright places where boom bands are playing. With banner flip flapping, once more you'll ride high, ready for anything under the sky, ready because you are that kind of guy. Oh, the places you'll go. There is fun to be done. There are points to be scored. There are games to be won. And the magical things that you can do with that ball will make you the winningest winner of all. Fame. You'll be as famous as famous can be with the whole wide world watching you win on TV. Except sometimes they won't. Because sometimes they don't. I'm afraid that sometimes you'll play lonely games too. Games you can't win because you'll play against you. All alone, whether you like it or not, alone will be something you'll be quite a lot. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance you'll meet things that scare you right out of your pants. There are some down the road between hither and yon that can scare you so much you won't want to go on. But on you will go! Though the weather be foul. On you will go! Though the weather is foul. On you will go! Though the hacking cracks howl. Onward up a many frightening creek. Though your arms may get sore and your sneakers may leak. On and on you will hike, and I know you'll hike far. And face up to your problems, whatever they are. You'll get mixed up, of course as you know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. So be sure when you step, step with care and great tact, and remember that life's a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft, and never mix up your right foot with your left. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and 3 quarters percent. Guaranteed. Kid, you'll move mountains! So, be your name Buxbum. Or Bixby. Or Bray. Or Mordecai Alley Van Allen O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. So, get on your way. Oh, the places we go! So, get on your way.